this module is part of our discussion on complex integration so basically we want to understand how to integrate a complex valued function on a contour so let's have a look what we have achieved so far so if we want to integrate f of z along the contour c then we can do that in the following way so first of all what are we going to need so we are going to need the parameterization of this contour okay so it starts from z of a it ends at z of b and there is a direction of motion as well so we are moving from z of a to z of b and how do we evaluate it so f of z of t this uh, calculate this composition multiply it with the derivative z prime of t and integrate this real valued uh, so basically it's a it's a complex valued function but it's a uh, function of one variable t and integrate it from a to b so in this uh, module our main task is to understand how do we integrate a complex valued function which is a function of one variable over the real interval a to b because uh, uh, if we can uh, if we can evaluate these integrals then we will be able to uh, evaluate uh, these contour integrals in an effective way so that's our main aim that you can see on the screen we want to see how to evaluate this f of t which is a complex valued function of one variable t from a to b which is an interval on the real line so uh, that's uh, the main definition of this module if we have a function f of t which is a complex valued function so it has a real part and an imaginary part so the real part is u of t plus iota v of t v of t is the imaginary part if we want to evaluate it from interval a to b then we can do that in the following way so very simply just evaluate the real part u of t dt from a to b and evaluate the imaginary part separately and um, add them in the following way so integral u of t a to b dt plus iota integral v of t a to b dt okay so that's how uh, we evaluate uh, this integral of a complex valued function on the real interval a to b now as we know that they are also improper integrals so improper integrals can be also evaluated in the same way and uh, when when i say improper integral in this case it means in uh, where we are uh, where we have this unbounded interval of integration now uh, let's have a look at this very simple uh, integral uh, which is uh, integral of this complex valued function of one variable t and the interval of integration is 1 to 2 so according to our definition we should evaluate the real parts and the imaginary parts separately we should integrate them in this way so integral of t which is the real part from 1 to 2 integral of t square which is the imaginary part from 1 to 2 and we know that from uh, calculus of one variable integral of t is t square by 2 and integral of t square is t cube by 3 and we can uh, evaluate them using fundamental theorem of calculus 2 square by 2 minus 1 by 2 plus iota 2 cube by 3 minus 1 by 3 so this is going to be equal to so 2 minus 1 by 2 plus iota 8 by 3 minus 1 by 3 so this is going to be equal to 3 by 2 plus iota 7 by 3 so that's our answer so that's how you evaluate this complex valued function of one variable over the real interval 1 to 2 now the next very basic uh, question is when does this integral exist so uh, of course it uh, it is not the case that uh, you can always evaluate this uh, uh, integral for each and every complex valued function f of t over each and every interval a to b but uh, it's mainly uh, due to this function when uh, uh, we we are able or not able to evaluate this integral so let's have a look at uh, the conditions under which this uh, uh, integral exists now the point is since the integration of this uh, uh, complex valued function over the real interval is basically uh, interpreted as uh, evaluation of two integrals integrals uh, two integrals of uh, functions of one variable so we want to see when those two integrals exist so once again we have to go back to calculus of one variable and have a look and recall uh, the criteria under which this uh, integral of function of one variable over the real interval a to b exists so the criteria is very simple 
this integral exists if this function h of x is piecewise continuous function. So piecewise continuous function has two conditions. So first of all, there are finitely many discontinuities. So if there are discontinuities, then they are going to be finitely many. Okay. So that's the first condition. And the second condition is at each and every point of discontinuity, the left hand limit and the right hand limit exists at these points. So for example, if you have uh, one uh, discontinuity, then left hand limit and the right hand limit should exist. So for example, if this is the point, let's call it P1, then at P1, you can see that the right hand limit, if you approach the point P along the graph to P, okay, so uh, the value of the limit is some finite number. And similarly, if you approach the point P1 from the left hand side along the graph, then once again, you reach at some finite point. And so the left hand limit and right hand limit uh, exist and they are not equal. Okay, so that's why the, it is a point of discontinuity. So if this happens, then we say that our function h of x is piecewise continuous. So if you, we use this criteria to our uh, two integrals of uh, functions of one variable, that is integral of u of t and integral of v of t, then uh, these two integrals exist if u of t and v of t are piecewise continuous on the closed interval a to b. So when, when this happens, then we say that our function or complex value function f of t which is equal to u of t plus out of v of t is piecewise continuous. So if uh, both of these integrals exist then obviously our integral f of t from a to b dt exists. So uh, our answer is basically this criteria this integral exists if f of t is piecewise continuous on the closed interval a to b. So that uh, settles uh, the question of existence when does this integral exist? Now let's move on to uh, more complicated examples. So if we have this uh, exponential function uh, exp t plus out t and we want to evaluate it from 0 to 2 pi, uh, pi by 2 then how do we evaluate it? Now of course the above integral can be evaluated by evaluating two real integrals so according to our definition. So what are those two real integrals? So in order to uh, separate that real and imaginary part uh, so that we can see what are those real integrals, we have to uh, do some uh, calculations like this. So we just write down e raised to power t plus iota t in the following way. e raised to power t, e raised to power iota t. Now of course using the Euler's formula, we can write it down in the following way. e raised to power t cosine t plus iota sine t. Okay. Now this uh, uh, clearly gives us the following two real integrals. So the first uh, real integral is basically e raised to power t cosine t and uh, the interval of integration is 0 to pi by 2 and the second integral is 0 to pi by 2 e raised to power t sine t. Now of course if we want to evaluate this uh, uh, integral of complex valued function uh, e raised to power t plus iota t then we have to evaluate these two real integrals. So uh, let's see how to evaluate these two real integrals. So first of all, we are going to focus on the first integral and then of course, uh, the second will be left as an exercise. Okay. So uh, to evaluate this thing, uh, we need to use integration by parts. Okay. So uh, let's see if we apply integration by parts, then what will happen? So 0 to pi by 2 e raised to power t cosine t dt. Okay. So first function into the integral of second function minus integral sine integral of okay so uh, so first function into the integral of second minus integral sine integral of second function into the derivative of first e raised to power dt and of course we can just evaluate this thing this function because it is now out of the integral sign so we can just evaluate this thing so it becomes e raised to power pi by 2 sine pi by 2 minus e raised to power 0 sine 0 minus 0 to pi by 2 e raised to power t sine t dt now this is going to be equal to e raised to power pi by 2 minus now, uh, this part is once again uh, not very easy to evaluate. So, once again, we use integration by parts. So once again, our first function is e raised to power t, our second function is sine t. So, first function 
into the integral of second now this time the integral is going to be minus cosine t minus integral sine integral of second function minus cosine t into the derivative of first so the first function is basically the same e raised to power t dt and the limits of integration are the same and now uh, we want to evaluate this thing because now it is out of the integral sign so we want to evaluate this thing and over here we can see that this is uh, exactly uh, the same integral as this one so uh, if we uh, simplify this thing then it becomes e raised to power pi by 2 and if we use these uh, limits of integration then it's going to give me minus 1 minus 0 to pi by 2 e raised to power t cosine t dt now uh, this is kind of uh, this is exactly the same as we have uh, the integral on the left hand side so this implies that using of course very simple uh, calculations this is going to give me e raised to power t cosine t dt is going to be equal to 1 by 2 e raised to power pi by 2 minus 1 so that's how we evaluate the first real integral now uh, moving on to the second uh, real integral now uh, as i told you that uh, i'm going to leave this as an exercise and if you evaluate this thing then uh, you can easily see that that it is going to be equal to so 1 by 2 e raised to power pi by 2 plus 1 okay so that's the value so uh, what does this imply so if we use uh, both these values then basically what are we going to get so 0 to pi by 2 exponential t plus iota t dt is going to be equal to 1 by 2 e raised to power pi by 2 minus 1 plus iota by 2 e raised to power pi by 2 plus 1 so that's how we are going to evaluate this complex integral of uh, basically uh, it's a uh, complex integral of a complex function which is a function of one variable and over this real interval pi by 2 now in this part uh, we saw a way for evaluating the integrals and these are integrals of complex valued functions of one variables over the real interval now there is one uh, important thing to notice that uh, in the second example uh, we calculated uh, some very uh, complicated real integrals now in the next uh, module uh, we will see that uh, this connection between uh, the complex integrals of complex valued functions and two real integrals is is a kind of two way uh, connection so using real integration of real valued function we can evaluate uh, the integrals of a complex valued function but uh, sometimes uh, it is useful that we evaluate the complex uh, integrals and this helps us in uh, simplifying uh, our real integrals so uh, in the next uh, discussions we will see that there is another way of evaluating this complex integral and that way is simple and this will give us a much simpler way of evaluating these real integrals.